All right, and so we're going to jump into one more because we did get a chance to go check out another one. Uh, so I'm still, like, up in the air how to say this. I looked it up I online. I think it's Grosvenor. I think it's Grosvenor. Grosvenor. Maybe the S is silent. Okay, so here's the first thing you need to know about this, which I, we didn't know. There's, like, 50 of these casinos. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, this yeah, is, like, a, a brand. Grosvenor. Grosvenor. So first off, uh, I looked it up. There is. There's literally, like, 50-plus casinos in England. I didn't realize there was that many. Uh, but we went to the first one that had a poker room, we thought, and we pulled up and the poker room was like closed or I just wasn't running that night. It was a small room and we had checked in, like went through the full nine to get our cards made. And the dude's like, nah, we don't got poker here. We're like, ah, oh, crap. He's like, you got to go to this one across town. <laughs> and we're like, oh, we're like, dude. We're like, all right. <laughs> so we did go to the big one though. Um, that one is on, I wrote it down, Bury New Road. I think that's right. Barry yes. New Road. Mm-hmm. That's the one we end up going to. And they have a huge poker room there. Um, it's got to be, it's, I'm assuming it's the biggest one in Manchester. It's got 23 plus tables. It has um, a pretty decent sized casino in there. It was definitely a little bigger than when we went to the Manchester 235. Yeah, yeah definitely bigger. It was yep. definitely a bigger casino. Um, had a lot going on. Had the coffee bar, which we talked about in the yep. Manchester. Soda bar was legit. Same thing again. Running all night. You can go there, hit the coffee bar, make a cappuccino. Like, that was clutch. Uh, a couple things threw me off, though. Again, the tipping we talked about before with the dealers. But same thing with the waitresses, though. So, I ordered a drink. I think I like, got a Red Bull or yeah, something yeah. like that I ordered. And um, she, like, brought back me, like, Cha- like coin change oh yeah and i was right. like i was like you can keep it here's another and i threw another dollar or a pound i threw another pound yeah and she's like what's this what do you want to order i'm like no i'm like that's for you and she's like she was baffled that yeah she's I like what her, is like, this dude doing yeah so tipping is just not a thing it's not customary yeah. um and that's the other thing too like if you haven't been to the uk like their coins are like dollars here like they don't have a dollar bill like they yeah. have coins That's a pound, and yeah. i mean if you're like me i absolutely hate change <laughs> yeah. so like i pretty much would get these coins and i'm like what am i gonna do with this like i wanted to just throw it on the street <laughs> but i didn't realize that it was like 10 bucks in my hand um but again like i came back with probably like 30 dollars in in pounds and and whatever, six pence, and I don't even know what the denominations were. So the other thing cool about the money, too, is that the actual paper money is denominations by sizes. So, like, the smallest is a five-pound uh, paper cash, but as you get bigger, the bills actually are bigger. So yeah. the bigger you go up, like, uh, they're actually bigger full bills, not in, like, the U.S. where everything's exactly the same denomination size-wise. So everything was different that way, too. So, like... You had like a fifty dollar bill. It's like this big, <laughs> like folded over. You're like, Jesus. Yeah. My wallet was like, well, actually, I think no. We both did fairly well at no, that we at did, that yeah. place. Like we both, we actually both kind of. I don't want to say crushed it, but I felt like because we were Americans, we were getting so much more action. Oh, yeah. Like this casino's action was night and day from Manchester. Manchester. Like it was much more aggressive. A whole lot of raising. A bunch of all in pots. And we were happy to oblige because, again, they thought we, we were easy pickings. Uh, and we were we, definitely yeah, had the we to- did a, yeah. we had the tourist logo just yep, 100%. on our forehead. They were like, "Look at these guys visiting here!" Like, but we, you know, took advantage of them because they didn't know that we were Nerd Thuzzi's Poker Podcast, and we did not <laughs> ever. <around. laughs> I don't fold on vacation, <laughs> dog. <laughs> Fuck around, you gonna find out. <laughs> Seriously, I remember the I, like without going into stories, a dude shoved on me with like. Queen Jack. Well, that one dude was just like yes. tilt mode. Oh my god! I mean, you guys all know there's there's those guys that are stacked up, and you're like, you sit at the table, and you're like, damn, this dude's got like, however however much money. He had a, th- a ton of chips in front of him, and like literally, he just bled it all yeah. out to everybody. I I benefited. You benefited. The guy to your right, the um, older guy, I think I stacked him, and then there was another dude to my right. He got a bunch off of him. Yep. But- uh it was like. They, so the one thing that they did, and I don't know if this is a year-round thing, but they remember we were confused because they had the extra chip there? Oh, uh, yes. So they had an extra chip, and I'm like, you know, I try not – I just want to kind of blend in and, like, just kind of go with what's going on. But they had this extra – and the, the it was a poker chip, but it looked completely different than the rest. And some dudes had – I think it was, like, orange or pink or something like that. And they had, like, uh, just a number on it. And I'm like, what the hell is – and, like, people that – so basically if you won pots, like, over a certain amount, you would get these extra chips, and then you cash them in for points. Uh, there was some kind of promotion going on. 
but it was it like, was like a rake back or something yeah, like that. It was like a bonus at the end of the month, but you they didn't clock it like here. You know, obviously in the U.S., they usually just clock your comp hours, and that's how they know it. But they actually were grading it by the amount of pots that you were playing. Yes, which I think after I was thinking about it after the fact, I'm like that definitely makes the place a lot looser. Like you know, think about like here in the U.S., like you sit there and just grind for like your tier time or your comp points to get your rake back at the end of the month. Yes, but if you if you can't get that unless you're actually winning pots, like that just makes it like honestly, it was it was baffling because there was a guy to my immediate left, and he I think he busted and rebought probably I don't know what like twelve hundred pounds or whatever. He was, he was in, in for, for over a thousand dollars. Yeah, but his whole like his satisfaction came from the fact that like he had jumped everybody in the club and was at the top of well, that like rake back well, list see, or whatever. No, there was more to that than we know. And you know, if you're watching, you could probably comment down below. But there was so this is like they're all connected those Grosners or whatever, and they give out like apparently because I was looking deeper into it, they give out like sponsorships and things for like oh, their top tier players. Maybe and, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. So I think you get like tournament packages and like there's a lot more that comes. Kind of pays it. for itself. Yeah. So I think he was looking at it that because he was apparently on the top of that list, so he was just trying to invest into trying. To yeah, get probably. Going. They have so speaking of which, they have a series which we actually just missed. That's right. I remember that. It was it's the Goliath series. It's part of the G U K P T and that's their own series. That's a Grosner Grosner um series that they put on in the UK around there. And the Goliath, I forget what it was, but it was like for like a three hundred dollar buy and million dollar guarantee price. It was something crazy. Yeah, and they hit it because I was looking at it when we came home, like, dude, they hit the numbers there. So uh they do multi-day events, and that is a like that is the spot apparently for your tournaments yeah, over yep. in England is the Grosvenor uh, casinos. So, yeah, I w- I would have loved to be able to play a tournament because the guy actually messaged me and I told him I would tag him in the podcast. I remember on. that. Yeah, and he, he was, was like, like, "Oh, the Goliath's gone." I'm like, "Dude, oh, we're not going to be there for that, man. I wish we would, but yeah, that's definitely the spot to be for the tournament stuff." But yeah, I mean, I I mean, they were all uh, all the things we went to. Every place was clean. Every place was friendly. Oh uh, yeah, you know? I mean, that's and that's the one thing. Like, I know we're tourists or whatever, but the people there treated us. Yeah, fine. Like fine. Like yeah. you, like you know, you hear these horror stories about the Americans being treated poorly or these other countries having it out, you know, against Americans or whatever. I don't know. I didn't feel any of that. If no. anything, like just from our short what four day experience in. You know, in the United Kingdom, you know, in Manchester, like everyone we met out there, all at all the poker rooms, the floor staff, the dealers, they were they were aces, man. Like they were like super, super cordial, super friendly. Even um, Manchester alone, the city was pretty clean. Yeah, clean. Yeah. Cl- like nice food was great. Like we we had we had a really really good experience, and and we we you know we can't wait to talk about you some know of some things. of the other things that we we did when we're out there. Um, but yeah, I, I'm looking forward to going back. Uh, if not to the UK, like definitely back to Dublin. I know and there's a couple places we had talked about yeah. wanting to check out um, poker room wise yes. over there. So hopefully, you know, in future podcasts we'll be able to touch on those things. Yeah. So uh, got some bucket list stuff off my, you know, uh, this summer. I mean, between Spain and Barcelona and Madrid and now the UK, it was cool just to play overseas and just see that the game is, you know, it's just it's a universal language. You know, you can sit down and just hang out with people and just kind of have that common, you know, connection together. Yeah. You know? We were actually, before we close, like when we were going from the one Grosner to the other, we hopped in that Uber. Oh, yeah, and I yeah. remember the guy, he was like, he was like, yeah, I was just in Vegas. And like, yeah. we, we sat through like a 15 minute Uber ride talking to a poker player from Manchester who had just went to Vegas for the series. And we were like talking about, you know, all the things we've already talked about in the pod, you know, um, the the air conditioner issue yeah, and like yeah. it was just cool to hear someone else's like experience with that just randomly who was our uber driver yeah, like it's definitely a universal language yeah I mean, for it, sure it's it just it's just a good connection point you know especially with people of our age that are you know into gambling or poker i mean you could just you know you have that common bond and it's cool to just kind of fit in there and get your feet wet and uh you know learn a little bit about the culture and yeah pick up yeah, a new beer sure. p- beer or two or whatever mangers i'm telling you <laughs> listen if you're listening you've never tried it i'm telling you mangers it's delicious <laughs> oh man yeah so that is our experience of our some poker rooms that we checked out 
Um, let us know what you think. Maybe you've played there, had some different experiences, good, bad, or ugly. Yeah, definitely comment. Let yeah, us know. Let us know. Maybe something we missed along the way, something that stood out that's unique. But uh, thank you for letting us uh, play there and have fun. So uh, that's it for the Nerd 3D Poker Podcast. Make sure that you follow our social medias. Check out all the good stuff. We got some stuff coming up, including a new wrestling podcast that's now out there. Uh, we got uh, toys, collectibles. Gaming. Yeah, video games. We got it all. We're going to have some announcements coming up for some meetups and things like that. So a lot of cool stuff happening with Nerd Enthusiasts. Thank you guys for all the support. Uh, make sure you check out the Patreon. Oh, well. also, t-shirts. You guys are interested in getting a yes, t-shirt, Nerd Enthusiast on. Poker Podcast t-shirt. Reach out to us. DM us. Anthony or I will get you one. Um, yeah. Definitely help support the channel. Thank you, guys and girls. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. Peace. See you.